Hi everyone, I'm Sanjeev and today I'm really excited to be able to talk to you about the 13 people skills that you need to have to be a great leader. And we're going to be learning from some of the best leaders the world has ever seen, the most iconic, the most famous, and the guys who have done a lot for their organizations. So stay right to the end. It's all going to be pretty exciting stuff. The 13 people skills that you need to build in order to be a great leader. Let's see what they are. So the first is actually quite obvious really. In order to be a great leader, we need to be a fantastic communicator. As we go up the corporate ladder, our technical skills become less useful to us and our people management skills, especially our communication skills become really, really important. You see, if you're a leader of a thousand people organization and you call all, all, all thousand people for a meeting and let's say as a leader, you make one wrong statement that will immediately affect the morale, the drive, the happiness of all thousand employees that you have. If you are the leader of a country, you get on TV and you make a statement that affects the entire population. See. The higher we go, the more people we have under us, the more careful we have to be about what we say and how we say it and our body language as well. So communication becomes extremely, extremely, extremely important. I remember in one of my previous jobs, right, the CEO of the company came down and said, guys, we are closing the division down because we are not happy that you have not made progress and you have not, you, you have not finished the product. See, what had happened there was this was a great bunch of people, but they hadn't had a leader helping them focus, helping them set targets. So these guys had been working pretty hard, but they hadn't finished the product. And the leader came down and, you know, made this statement. I'm going to close the division because you guys haven't, you know, performed. And this great bunch of people got so upset that most of them left almost immediately for better jobs, for higher salary. So that was a mistake the leader did because it was actually not their fault. It was the fact that they hadn't had a leader leading this team. I hope you get the point. So effective communication is extremely, extremely, extremely important. When we talk of communication, we are talking of clear articulation, which means the words you speak need to be understood by the people that you're speaking to. So communication in a leader is not about showing how clever we are, not at all. It's about making sure the people we are speaking to understand. The same way, another organization I, I worked at, the leader was pretty good in his English language skills. Really good. And he was really proud of it. And so were we. We were proud of him as well. Unfortunately, we didn't understand most of what he said. <laughs> so communication is all about making sure the people you're speaking to understand making sure that if I'm communicating to you, you would actually do what I'm asking you to do. That's communication. So clear articulation becomes important. What do I mean by that? This is not clear articulation. If I say, go away your thoughts and clear ideas clearly, go away your thoughts and ideas clearly. That's not clear articulation. I need to say, convey your thoughts and ideas clearly. That's what I mean by clear articulation. That's number one. Communication also is about active listening, not about a leader you know, who just listens with half his mind or, you know, half a year. No, we need to be fully immersed and listening. That's communication as well. There, there are stories of some of the greatest leaders in the world, presidents of the U.S. like Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, who they say, you know, if somebody spoke to them, they would, they would stop even if it's for 10, 15 seconds and give that person their 100% attention while they're having a conversation with that person. And of course, that person that they spoke to would remember that conversation for the rest of their lives. So active listening is also a very important part of communication. Clear articulation, active listening, and also the nonverbal cues, everything that we do with our, with our bodies, body language as it's commonly known, extremely important. I'm not going to be teaching body language in this video, but just showing you that it's really, really important. Richard Branson, one of the great leaders that we have seen in the last century really, and maybe this century as well, says communication skill is one of the most important skills any leader can have. And I think that's true because Richard Branson is a great communicator. Another great communicator, Lee Iacocca. I don't know whether you have heard of him. 
and I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, he was the president of the Ford Motor Company and Chrysler Corporation at different times. And he actually helped Chrysler avoid bankruptcy. And he's known as, as being a master communicator. Great charisma and also persuasive speaking style. And what he says is, you can have brilliant ideas, but if you can't get them across, your ideas won't get you anywhere. So you're only as good as what comes out of your mouth, how you can communicate your ideas. No point us having it for ourselves. Number one, people skill, a great leader needs to have effective communication, be a great communicator. The second people skill we need to have is empathy, which is putting yourself into the shoes of the people you lead, the team that you lead, and try to think, if I was them, if I was you, how would I react in this situation? Take someone who's joining the organization newly, and sometimes we expect you know, big things from them from day one. But imagine if we were the person joining an organization uh, for the first time, and it's our first day, of our first week, our first month. How was it for us? We weren't very comfortable. We were getting to know people. We were getting to know the processes. Yeah, so me expecting some great stuff from someone within the first week or first month may not be reasonable. So that's empathy, putting ourselves into the other person's shoes. Simon Sinek, the, the, the person who really popularized this whole term of start with why, we tell people why you do what you do, says, leadership is not about being in charge. It's about taking care of those in your charge. And I think that's really important. One of the key things of being a leader is helping your team to grow, helping your team to succeed. So not about being in charge, but helping those, taking care of those who are in your charge. So being a leader is a great responsibility. Like uh, Spider-Man said, with great power comes great responsibility. So let's take that seriously. The third people skill that we need to have is conflict resolution. As a leader, we'll have different people coming and telling us different things, various conflicts in the organization. If we take sides, it erodes the trust that people have in us. So we need to be fair. We need to be unbiased. Well, we might be biased as a human being, but that biasness should not affect the decisions we take. So conflict resolution. We need to listen to people. We need to listen openly to people in a transparent way and then take uh, the best decision possible and, and solve those conflicts between people. So that becomes really important as well. Conflict resolution. The Dalai Lama, uh, someone uh, who, uh, the spiritual leader uh, that we all know, says, the best way to resolve any problem in the world is to sit down and talk. So the leader, as a leader, you need to get people to sit down in front of you and talk things over without taking sides. Then we can actually resolve the conflict. Hope that makes sense. The fourth one is to be adaptable. See, one of the only constants we can be always sure of is change. Change is always, always, always going to happen. So we need to adapt. When there are changes, we need to adapt to the, to the changes. If the leader gets nervous, becomes anxious, becomes worried, when there is some change, everyone below that leader in the team is going to panic. So the leader has to show the way and show, yes, there is a problem, or yes, there is a challenge, but we can resolve it. We can come out of it. I'm not sure what the solution is, but I know for sure there is a solution. And that becomes extremely, extremely important. So leader needs to be adaptable. And part of adaptability is flexibility, changing. When, when the circumstances change, when the environment change, we need to be flexible to change as well. So some of my work is doing training programs for organizations. And there was a time in the past where if we were scheduled to start at nine and we can't start at nine because you know some people haven't turned up, it used to really upset me. And I used to get really angry as well, but not anymore. I have actually become more flexible in my outlook. So now I'm there on time, of course, ready to start at nine. But if the participants are not, we wait for a while till they come. Because empathy is also there, thinking, okay, they are late for a reason. It could be their, their car broke down or they had some problem. So let's give them a little while. And we are flexible. And of course, we then go on for a little bit longer to still finish the content. So flexibility is important. And also resilience. Resilience is, you know, not getting scared when things go wrong. Keeping at it. Still getting to the goal. Keeping in mind the end game. Handling setbacks and challenges always with a positive attitude. That's really, really important for a leader. Charles Darwin, 
the person who actually told us about uh, evolution, isn't it? He said, it's not the strongest or the most intelligent who will survive, but those who can best manage change, survival of the fittest. So as a leader, we are not going to be successful. We are not going to be able to grow our organization if we can't be adaptable, if we don't have flexibility and resilience. So that becomes really important as well. Number five is influence and persuasion. As a leader, we need to have the skills of being able to influence and persuade people. How do we do this? By inspiring them, by walking the talk, by showing the way, by leading by example, by leading from the front. That becomes really important, isn't it? Then we can inspire others, motivate them to achieve the goals that we have as a team, as an organization. Also, in order to inspire and persuade, we need to have build trust between the leader and the followers or the leader and the rest of the team. Without a foundation of trust, we really can't inspire anyone. So we need to take time, build the relationship and then build the trust by walking the talk, doing what we say we are going to do. Then we can inspire people. Then we can actually build trust between the leader and the rest of the people as well. Very important. So trust becomes really, really important. And just on influence and persuasion, Ronald Reagan, probably one of the most popular presidents of the US, he was an actor before he became the president, says, the greatest leader is not necessarily the one who does the greatest things. He's the one that gets the people to do the greatest thing. And that's important, isn't it? So leading is all about getting the best from your people by inspiring them, by showing them the way, by walking the talk. The sixth skill that a great leader needs to have is building a super team. A leader is only as strong as his team. Yeah, if we don't have a good team, we can't really be a good leader. Think of a cricket team. Yeah, the captain is fantastic, but he has a lousy team. They're not going to win any matches. <laughs> Right, so we are only good as our team and it's the job of the leader to build the team. So how do we do this? We have to encourage collaboration. Like the earlier point where we resolve conflicts by listening to people and not taking sides. If we actually take sides, if we play politics in the organization, we can't really foster collaboration. We are actually fostering competition. People are going to want to compete with each other. Healthy competition is not a bad thing. It's a really good thing. But when, you know, the competition is such that you can't walk down the corridor in the organization without wondering from where you're going to get a knife in your back. Remember? Uh, getting stabbed in the back. <laughs> if that's the case, it's not going to be really great. I am a firm believer in collaboration, in building a great team and doing that by being fair and open and transparent to everyone. Then there is that foundation of trust that we can build. So fostering collaboration is part of building a great team. And also, of course, recognizing the strengths of each person in the team. Everyone is different. So when we are delegating, that's also important in developing the best team. You take a great team again, you get a, a guy who is a good batsman and you, you, you put him down in the order, in the batting order and get him to open the bowling. It's not going to uh, do well for the team, isn't it? Right? We are not going to get the best result. So we have to pick people according to their strengths, give them the role that fits their strengths and then clear the way and help them to perform. Give them the resources, give them the tools and help them to perform. So that's the role of the leader, helping the team to achieve. And this the team, T-E-A-M stands for together each achieves more. <laughs> so we can build a great team. And that's one of the key skills a leader needs to have by inspiring the people. Henry Ford, yeah, the guy who started the Ford Motor Company says, coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress and working together is success. Coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, working together is success. And that's what makes a great, great team. Emotional intelligence, the seventh skill a great leader needs to have. And Daniel Goleman, the person, the professor who actually popularized this whole term of emotional intelligence says, emotional intelligence is the ability to use emotion to increase your own and others success. So emotional intelligence, extremely important. What does this mean? Self-awareness, being aware of yourself. Self-regulation, being able to regulate yourself. Something I'm still working hard at doing. I still lose my temper from time to time, which I don't want to. But it's a lifelong journey sometimes to create, to, to change one's behavior. As long as we are improving each day, take that as a, as a success. Take that as progress. 
each day if they are a little better than the previous day that's that's progress that's success and that's what we really need to uh, need to aim for then being aware of others around us social awareness and of course empathy being able to put ourselves into other shoes and feel what they are feeling is all part of emotional intelligence i know we discussed empathy a little little earlier as well but the broader emotional intelligence is also a great skill that leaders need to have and today we find lots of organizations hiring people for their emotional intelligence but it's such a crucial skill today especially with lots of gen z's and gen y or the millennials in the workplace we can't handle people the way we used to maybe 25 years ago you say the wrong thing in the wrong situation and people will just leave overnight and we are going to lose some good people so emotional intelligence becomes even more important the eighth skill a great leader needs to have is feedback and coaching today that's so important we need to coach for performance to build the team we need to coach so constructive feedback is an essential part of coaching when we give positive feedback in a positive way that's great if we give positive feedback when but in a negative way the person we are giving the feedback to is going to feel really demotivated not wanting to do the work why should i this is the way my boss spoke to me and we also need to give negative feedback because we need to help people we need to show them when they are doing something wrong and to do that we have to give the negative feedback but give the negative feedback in a positive way so that we are uplifting people if these two subjects really interest you how to give positive and negative feedback in a positive way there are some great videos in this channel where i'm actually teaching more about this so do do have a look do go through the videos and find them and you can watch them as well and tell me what you think right there are some role plays that we are, which we are doing also on how to actually do this in a practical way tell me what you think i'll be so happy to hear from you there is also mentorship when we talk of feedback and coaching we have to be a mentor to the people under us so be, becoming a mentor is also a skill that we need to develop how do we share our experience how do we guide how do we show someone what to do how do we delegate effectively it's all part of actually mentorship and being a good mentor means that we always have to have the right intention which is helping my team member to succeed if that's there the rest of the mentorship is going to fall into place jack welch possibly one of the most famous ceos that we have seen who led general electric for a long time couple of decades i think says before you are a leader success is all about growing yourself when you become a leader success is all about growing others so a leader grows people the main task of a leader is not actually to you know achieve higher profits but to help his team succeed if the team is succeeding if we are growing people the profits are definitely going to come but if the profits become the main goal then we are not going to really look at developing the people but we are going to go after profits at any cost isn't it far nicer far better far more human far more emotionally exciting to grow people so that we can achieve our targets so everyone grows the organization grows and the customers are happy as well the ninth skill that a great leader needs to have is cultural competence we need to respect diversity we need to embrace diversity respect people's preferences respect cultural differences we can't be like the old 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 ways of doing things and thinking we would we would only recruit people who are like us then we are only going to get a whole bunch of people who think the same way we get diverse people we we have a whole different group of people thinking in different ways we are going to get much better ideas from the team we are going to be able to grow much faster isn't it so we have to respect diversity be inclusive get more people in regardless of color or creed or ethnicity or religion or background purely based on competence and what people can do that becomes really important foster an inclusive environment where everyone feels valued is a extremely important skill uh, that a leader needs to have and bill clinton a former president of the us says we all do better when we work together our differences do matter but our common humanity matters more our differences do matter but our common humanity matters more i always like someone who's different because that brings in a unique flavor into the team isn't it as long as we all share the same values that's that's important we can be very different but we need to share the same values we can't have people working in the team 
same team who have different values. One guy values honesty and the other guy doesn't. That's not going to work. One guy values commitment, the other doesn't. That's not going to work. So we need to have the same values, but then let's be as diverse as we can and that's going to be great. The 10th skill that a leader has to have is decision making. We need to be strong in our decision making. The leader can't vacillate. One point saying, okay, let's do that. And in the next five minutes say, okay, no, not that, let's do that. And then come back to let's do this. Right? It will confuse everyone. It's not to say the leader can't make a mistake. Of course, we are human as well. If you make a mistake, we need to recognize it. We need to own up for it. We need to take responsibility for it. That's fine because we all make mistakes and then say, okay, right, we made a mistake. I took the wrong decision. Where do you go from here? Okay, let's change. Let's do something different. And that's fine. But we need to be clear on our decision making. If the leader gives a clear decision, everybody around the leader feels confident. On the subject of decision making, if I really want the opinions of others, let's say there's a problem, there's a challenge, and I want the opinion of my team, what should we do? As a leader, I should never say what I think first. I should never tell them my decision first. If I do, I won't really get their opinions because they know this is my standpoint. I've already taken a stance. And even if they have a better idea or they feel that my idea is wrong, they won't want to really tell me because they don't want to go against the leader. So be very careful. If we really want to get the ideas of others, let's get those ideas first before telling them what we really think. Because then we can actually be very open. And also, if I was going to make the wrong decision, now there's no loss of face because it doesn't matter. I can, you know, just listen to the other's ideas and I can realize, ah, that idea is better than the one that I was going to say. So then I don't say anything and I can take the idea, appreciate the person who brought the idea and we can adopt it and move forward. And also, of course, getting your whole team to buy into the decision. So consensus building. If you all respect the decision and we all realize just this is the best decision as a part of the team, that's great for the leader, right? So leader needs to make sure that everyone understands the decision and there is consensus that this is what we are going to do. Yeah, it's like collective responsibility at the end, right? Once the team decides, that's what we are going to do. Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon says, all of my best decisions in business and in life have been made with heart, intuition and guts, not analysis. So I'm not telling you not to analyze and then make a decision. But, but it's a good thing to sometimes just go with our gut. And you know the reason for that, right? There is, there is intelligence in your gut. So there is neuron-like cells, brain cells, well, of a, of a sort, right? Neuron-like cells. So in our brain, we have neurons, right? Which are the brain cells. So there are neuron-like cells in our gut, which also, also carry intelligence. That's why somebody says, you know, I had a gut feeling. I just felt that was right. Because the gut feeling is not filtered by uh, beliefs or rationale or uh, bias or anything like that. Gut feeling is, is, is very raw. So sometimes that's why I say the gut feel. I don't know why I made that decision, but I just felt it was the right decision. And that's what Jeff Bezos says that he does. He goes with his heart intuition and his, so heart has intelligence as well. More neuron-like cells in the heart, about 10,000. So I, I have read. So intelligence, not only in the brain, but in the heart and the gut as well. The 11th is actually having a clear vision, articulating that vision and setting clear goals. Uh, without a clear vision, where is the team trying to go? What are we trying to achieve? We don't know. We, we, we might be just aimlessly going here and there and everywhere, right? So the leader needs to set a clear vision. Jack Welch again, the, the CEO of uh, General Electric from 1981 to 2001, 20 years, says good business leaders create a vision, articulate that vision, passionately own the vision and relentlessly drive it to completion. I think that's, that's a great statement. Good business leaders create a vision, articulate the vision so they are clear, they say it. People understand what this vision is. Passionately own it. Passion becomes a great hallmark of a great leader and relentlessly drive it to completion. Without giving up, we keep driving it to completion until we can achieve the vision and I think Jack Welch definitely did it. Under his leadership, General Electric's market value rose dramatically so much, thousandfold I think and he did some great stuff with that uh, with that company. So the leader needs to have a very very, the leader needs to be really passionate about the vision and create it, articulate it, drive it until we actually achieve it. Yeah, so vision, without a vision what can we do? I remember the 1996 cricket team under Arjuna Ranthunga having a very clear vision isn't it? We are going to win this World Cup somehow. And Arjuna was able to mobilize the entire team. 
they all worked as one. They all worked as a fantastic unit and we won the World Cup in 1996. Quite a difference to what we see today, isn't it? Where there isn't a clear vision. Is it the leader's fault? Is it the team member's fault? I don't know. But we are definitely not getting results, which we did under Arjuna. So leader becomes very important. Clear vision, very important. The 12th skill that we need to have as a leader is time management. Leader says, okay, I'm going to be uh, here at this meeting at 9 o'clock. Leader is late, not a good thing. Leader comes in half an hour later and says, I'm so sorry I got caught up doing something else. And that's still not a good thing. <laughs> the leader is wasting everyone's time. The leader needs to be able to prioritize things, identify what needs to be done first, what is urgent and also important that we need to do first. Remember uh, the, 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 the productivity quadrant or the prioritization quadrant that Stephen Covey spoke about in his book, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective Leaders. So the quadrants. First, we do what we think is urgent and important. So that's number one. Prioritize our tasks. So not just doing everything that is on our to-do list, but doing what is important and urgent first, then doing what is urgent, then doing what is important, and being sure that we don't really spend a lot of time doing something that is not urgent and also not important. Where we spend a lot of time, we waste a lot of time. There are some leaders who want to do everything themselves. So they are overworked. They are working late hours. Remember, a leader's prime responsibility is growing people. In order to grow people, in order to build a great team, we need to delegate. To do that, we need to know people's strengths and weaknesses. Who's good at what? You can't put a round peg into a square hole and force it in there. Well, you can, but it's going to be very, very uncomfortable. It's going to be very difficult, very tiring. <laughs> but if you can get a round peg and have a round hole and put it into the round hole, well, everyone is happy, isn't it? What does this mean? Find the right job for the right person and then give them the, the, the job that suits them the most. If there is someone who loves talking to people, don't keep them in the back office to you know, uh, just, uh, just do reports. Send them out to the front office, let them do customer service, let them do sales. So the right role for the right person and then you actually find that that person is performing. So delegation also becomes very important. I, I love to say this about delegation. Delegation is all about like trying to fly a kite. So when you're flying a kite, you never let go of the string. You're always holding the string. Although the kite might be so far up in the sky that the kite thinks that it has full independence. right? But no, the leader is still holding on to that string. And we don't immediately let the kite go off into the sky either, right? We let it out a little bit, yeah? It becomes stable, then we give it a little bit more freedom, even more stable, little bit more freedom, even more stable, and the kite goes off into the sky with confidence. And that's the same way we need to delegate, right? Give freedom little by little. We sometimes do the reverse. We give someone a lot of freedom, that guy messes up, and we are upset, and that person is upset, and then we bring them back and say, no, 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 I'm going to monitor everything that you do very closely. People are demoralized. People are demotivated. They might even leave. But we do it the other way. It's not a big deal. So we say, okay, this is a new task. Right? I'm sure you are also not sure of how to do it because you have never done it before. And I also would really like you to succeed in this task. So let's work closely first. Let me guide you. Let's work together as a team. And as you gain confidence, Okay, then we can increase the freedom. Then I don't need to monitor so much. Hope that uh, makes sense to you. And Stephen Kai, we are talking of his prioritization matrix, says the key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule, but to schedule your priorities. It's very important. Not to prioritize what's on your schedule, because sometimes we have a whole load of things, right? Some of them may not be important, but to schedule your priorities. Decide what's important for you, make sure you get it done. And the final one is accountability. The leader cannot expect his team to be accountable if the leader is not accountable. What does that mean? If the leader says, this is what we are going to do, we are going to achieve this vision, we are going to achieve this goal, the leader has to be accountable for making that happen. Right? If the leader can't say, no, I couldn't do it because my team didn't do it. If the team doesn't perform, that's the leader's responsibility as well. So we need to be accountable. Take responsibility. Take responsibility for the actions of the team, the, the performance of your department or your organization. That's the leader's responsibility. And not only responsibility, we have to be accountable for the result. Which means if we don't get the result, yeah, I'm accountable. It's my fault. I didn't do my job if I'm the leader. I can't pass the buck. I have to be accountable. 
own your actions and decisions. Then we can expect the same from our team. Again, lead him from the front, walk in the talk. And finally, in order to be accountable, we also need to be transparent. Be open and honest about both our successes and our failures. So that builds trust as well. The team would build trust in the leader. And Winston Churchill, one of the best prime ministers that uh, the United Kingdom has ever seen, said the price of greatness is responsibility. The price of greatness is responsibility. We need to take that responsibility. We need to own it. So we spoke about 13 uh, people skills that great leaders need to have. Let's go over them very, very fast. Effective communication, have empathy, resolve conflicts, be adaptable, influence and persuade people, build a great team, have emotional intelligence, be able to give feedback and coach our team to success, develop cultural competence by respecting diversity and having inclusive practices, be able to make decisions fast, so decision making is a skill, have a clear vision and a goal, be great at time management and be able to be accountable. So those are the skills that a great leader needs to have. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do let me know what you thought of in the comments. If any of these skills are difficult for you to develop or you need some help, you need some advice, please reach out. I might be able to help you through some other videos or maybe there's a training program or even, you know, just ask me a question and I'll be happy to uh, try and help you, guide you, show, show you some uh, steps that you can take towards developing these skills. So the 13 skills that great leaders need to have. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give it a like. Yeah, please do give, it, give us a comment and don't forget to subscribe for even nicer uh, content going forward, right? Uh, please don't forget to subscribe so you get some great content even in the future. Go back and watch some other videos that you may have missed as well. I'll see you at the next one. Stay safe and stay blessed. Thank you.